About gender equality in Korea, different people have different views. The 2014 UNDP Human Development Index for One has ranked Korea as world 14th for that issue. This means Korea has come a long way, and at the same time, Korea still has further ways to go. Here, having further ways to go includes the idea that Korea needs to more actively help other countries close their gender gaps. For that issue, we have a very special guest in this program. Mrs. Sherry Blair, the founding chair of Omnia Strategy, a global law firm, and also, of course, a former first lady of the UK for over 10 years, from 1997 until 2007. Ms. Blair, what a tremendous honor to have you on our program. The honor is in all mine, and I'm so delighted to be here once again in Korea. Thank you very much. OK, our program's name itself is Upfront, so we'll ask you some of the most important questions upfront here. Uh, quite a while ago, I heard this idea that actually if we have to choose, it's more important to educate women than men. Can you explain what this idea actually means? Absolutely. First of all, of course, as a mother of three sons and only one daughter, uh, we need to med educate men as well. Mm, but of course. if you're looking at the wider impact of education on an individual child, then the impact that a girl child makes as a result of her education is actually wider than the male child. And why is that? It's because of the intergenerational aspect of women. Because if you educate a child, a girl child, you're educating a mother. And Mother's a, impact on children. Absolutely. Right. And an educated mother mm. is more likely to have fewer children, is more likely to make sure that those children attend school themselves, is less likely to marry her girl children at a young age, is more likely to inoculate her children and to transmit to them uh, public health messages about hygiene and and safety, and uh, in that respect, of course, is therefore more likely to have a, a wider impact on the development of a country. Right. I think that explanation is very clear here. These days, you know, uh, we all know that the interest in women's rights, women's status, and education of young children in particular areas around the world has been increasing. Uh, those areas we are talking about uh, Asia, and Middle East, of course, Africa as well. But uh, Asia and, and the Middle East, for instance, and then, then Western Asia, for instance, why do you think the interest has been growing? It may be an obvious question, but still, you know, our audience may be quite interested in your own explanation for that. Well, I think, first of all, let's understand in the 21st century, we live in a globalized world. Mm -hmm. So what happens in different countries around the world, which may have been obscured before, uh, are only a mobile phone away from uh, revealing what is going on. Of course. One of the things that we know about Asia in particular is that one in four mm. of the child brides around the world come from this region. I see. Um, early child marriage is something which has disastrous consequences, not only for the individual child mm. herself, mm -hmm. but because of her lost potential right. uh, for the society as a whole. Um, a young girl who gets married at 12 or 14 uh, is likely to have more children, right. is likely not to be educated, um, is more likely to suffer from birth injuries and injuries to her health um, from giving birth too early, and is more likely, it's more likely to mean that her children too will be condemned to a cycle of poverty. Right. Right. We also know that in this region of the world, issues and attitudes to girls' education aren't as positive as they very much are mm -hmm. here in Korea. So in, in Britain uh, now, we are lucky enough to be the home of Malala. Right, right. But Malala, the of course... Of the Peace Prize for Nobel Prize last year, 2014. Exactly. Right. But we know that the reason she got that Peace Prize was mm -hmm. because of her bravery right. in standing up for girls' education in her country, in right. northern Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And as a result of which, of course, she was almost killed and right. suffered severe mm -hmm. injury. Right. Um, we also, of course, in, this, in, in Asia, are, are home to places like Afghanistan. Right. And of course, ah, my husband was prime minister uh, at a time when uh, the 
Allied forces uh, recaptured mm -hmm. Afghanistan and, and, and Kabul. And right. there, of course, well, we knew already, but we, we saw for ourselves the impact of years of Taliban rule uh, on women's education. That impact wasn't just that whole swathes of young girls didn't get any education at mm -hmm. all, mm -hmm. but it was also because women teachers were forbidden to teach, young boys didn't get education either. Right. All the education they got in the madrasas were not the sort of education that would equip them to um, compete in the global right. economy. Right. So not only did we lose a generation of girls, actually, mm -hmm. we lost a generation of boys right. too. Right. So there are modern examples of problems mm -hmm. with um, women in this region and problems particularly in relation to girls. Right. And that's why you're involved in this uh, activity of uh, st uh, developing and promoting uh, this institution called Asia University for Women. And we actually have a short video clip that's prepared for the issue that you just talked about and also this institution. So after this uh, clip, let's continue our discussion on this. Let's take a look at this. Fantastic. Even in this day and age, women's rights remain a huge challenge in many countries, especially in Asia and the Middle East. One of the biggest problems in women's rights is early marriage in parts of Asia and the Middle East. According to UNICEF, over 720 million young women fall victim to premature marriages. Most of them are from Asia, the Middle East and Africa, and many of them have suffered from domestic violence. By marrying at an early age, most of the women lose the opportunity to be educated, which limits their ability to participate in society, leading to high levels of dependency on men. This vicious cycle keeps repeating itself. The AUW, or Asian University for Women, was established to stop the vicious cycle and educate women in Asia and the Middle East, suffering from severe discrimination amidst wars and famine. Today, Upfront discusses the importance of female education with Sherry Blair, Chancellor of the Asian University for Women, championing female education in Asia and the Middle East. Okay, we have just seen the video here, uh, Ms. Blair. Uh, let's talk about this institution, AUW. Uh, just brief introduction, uh, what does it do? We just had a little bit of uh, the information in the video, but tell us briefly. Well, its mission mm -hmm. is to be an Asian university. So mm -hmm. though it is situated in Chittagong in Bangladesh, right. it is not a Bangladesh university. International. It's an international university. In mm -hmm. fact, it has its own special charter, which gives it independence from the government. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, it is there to serve as a liberal arts okay. center mm -hmm. for girls in the region. Mm -hmm. And though, again, we know uh, there are parts of, of, of this region where uh, the students perform, outperform the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. But we also know mm. that there are many parts of this region where the students get education, which is uh, a best rote learning. Right. It doesn't encourage them to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. It doesn't encourage them to speak out. Um, some of the girls have said to me that one of the, we're coming to the AUW and going mm -hmm. into a classroom mm -hmm. where at the end of, of uh, talking about an issue, the teacher says to you, and what do you think, mm -hmm. is something that they have not experienced Encouraging before. independent thinking. Encouraging so on, independent right. thinking Going is very important. Going beyond their culture limits and so on. Uh, relating to some of the points that you have mentioned, uh, you know, so since the entity itself is international by nature, and also it's uh, based upon, in my understanding, the UN, uh, the uh, MDG, Millennium Development Goal, for instance, right? Do we call this as a sort of an international organization? It's an independent organization funded mm -hmm. by private funds. Okay. Um, the vast majority of girls mm -hmm. are on uh, full scholarships. Okay. Its aim is to seek young leaders of merit across the world right. to select Young, young female women, leaders. Young course. female leaders right, of, right. across the world. So they're mm -hmm. selected on merit. Mm -hmm. We have uh, far many poor people applying for places than we have. We have about 100 places a year to 
offer. You mentioned it, around the world. Does that mean that even though the name is Asia University for Women, it uh, welcomes all the female students from all no. around the world? No, it is specifically focused on Asia. On Asia. Because we have so much to do we have, in this region. Let me say, by the mm -hmm. way, that we, we have so much to do in Africa and other parts of the world right. too. But this is a regional university mm -hmm. which is supposed to encourage uh, to, to grow the strengths of Asia and remember mm -hmm. that we mustn't forget that there are many strengths in Asia too and we I don't want you to think that these young women uh, uh, these young women are very strong resourceful young women who mm -hmm. are going to be and are proving to be great resources right. for their country but we also want to show the diversity of cultures, mm. of religions, of beliefs right. within Asia. Mm. So those 60% of the students are in fact Muslim, 40% okay. Okay. come mm. from other faiths, Hindus, Buddhists, Christians, mm. um, some of them have no faith, but they all live and work together. As, as fellow Asians mm. who learn to understand each other, not just from what they learn by having an inquiring mind in class, mm -hmm. but by rooming together because we mix the nations up, right. by eating together, mm -hmm. by playing sport together. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like best about the Asian University for Women is that every girl has to do a martial art. Oh, and, and I hope Taekwondo is part of it. <laughs> Is that what? Korean martial art. Is that your is that your speciality? Uh, I've done done it as well. Yeah, of course. I have my own belt, but anyway. Oh, that's fantastic. Right. Well, we but everyone has to do their own martial art. And we have, and we also encourage girls sports. Now, mm. uh, here again, I'm showing sure in, in Korea, mm. uh, a country that's hosted Olympic Games and right. uh, World Cups. Mm -hmm. and, um, the idea of girls not doing sport would right. seem extraordinary. But, but in many of the countries where mm. our girls come from, they probably haven't had the opportunity to play sport at all. I was talking to a Very young woman. Point. I mm. was talking to a young woman um, who's one of our current students, and mm -hmm. she's from Nepal, and she's now become one of the basketball team. Mm -hmm. And she said until she came to the Asian University for Women, she thought basketball was only for boys. Oh, okay. What a difference it's making. So yeah. this, is a, right. this is another important difference mm. that, that it makes. You know, Ms. Blair, uh, diversity is all great thing and all that. And I can see, kind of picture it, you know, like visualize how dynamic this whole environment would be. But then again, when you mix so many different students from so many different cultural and religious backgrounds, uh, I'm just curious about this uh, little conflicts and perhaps disagreements, how they sort them out and so on in terms of the internal dynamics uh, inside the school. You're very perceptive. It's a, it's a very good question. And when the university started in 2008, mm -hmm. um, it was to some extent a leap of faith, bringing all these girls from right. different parts of, of, of the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, of, of Asia. Asia, which is the largest region of yes, the world. Yes, absolutely. If right. you look at the map, that's right. a hell of a lot of the world. How would it actually work? But the extraordinary thing is mm -hmm. that these remarkable young women who are desperate to learn, mm. who, if you s talk to them about their individual journeys, uh, imagine, for example, a girl from Afghanistan right. in a culture where you know, girls' education is not really encouraged. Right, right. Um, she has to, first of all, persuade her families, mm -hmm. her family, that she should go. Just like the case that we've seen in the case of Malala, right? Mm -hmm. For instance, even though she's, well, she was in Pakistan, but girls no, discouraged. Well, girls from Pakistan are, are also in, 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 right, in, in, right. in, in the Asian University. Right. So these women. girls who are being discouraged from learning in their homes, home countries coming to this university to learn, so there is that excitement. There's an excitement. There's yeah. a there's a real uh, desire to learn. So they right. have they do share that in common. Mm -hmm. So though they come from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. their main aim uh -huh. is to get a, a good education. So we start with them having one thing in common, mm -hmm. which is the desire to learn right. and the desire to have their minds and hearts mm -hmm. opened to mm -hmm. each other. I can't of course, really think about any former. A uh, common ground than that, right? Desire to learn, so that unite them together. Well, and the the, the fact they all are from Asia, mm -hmm. the, the, there is a, there's a cultural bond there. Okay. And uh, it was interesting today when I was at AWA talking with them, and we have a, a relationship with AWA where some of our graduates uh, come right. and, and study master's degree mm. there, and uh, we were actually discussing whether there is a 
there are particular cultural issues for mm. Asian women, mm. um, which are different or uh, not totally different, mm. but s right. slightly different right, right. from, for example, women like me who come from Western Europe mm, and right. um, there, there was a general feeling that actually there is they have more in common than they have and one of the things for example we were talking about is they were saying is this this attitude about the age when a girl should marry mm. many of the time I, I go to the Asian University for women and, and age for marriage yes okay is that some of these girls you know, say, well, the very fact that I've come here at mm -hmm. 18, 19 to get an education, mm -hmm. you know, uh, some people think that will mean I will never get married uh, because men won't want to marry a, a woman who's educated better mm -hmm. than, sh than he is right, right. or I'll just be too old. Mm -hmm. And um, all those cultural concerns, all those cultural concerns, right, right. which do change actually as mm. the norm for women's education moves, because right. I will, I re responded, of course, that once upon a time in my country too, the average age of marriage was much younger. Mm -hmm. right. um, Just considering uh, how much, uh, how much of a long way UK has traveled. Yeah. And Korea also, we had a very dramatic experience of you know women facing different kind of experience mm. as the society and the economy changes, mm -hmm. of course. Going back to the program of AUW itself, uh, when you select all this diverse group of students, what are some of the key criteria, for instance? How do you actually select these students who have great potentials to become future leaders? This is, a, this, this is, this is the key, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because obviously they're coming from Cambodia, right. Vietnam, mm -hmm. China, mm -hmm. um, Indonesia, right. uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Nepal. Um, the education systems right. in these countries are all different. Right. One criteria is that they have completed the education in their own countries. Secondary education. Secondary education okay. in their okay. own countries. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, so we, we look for academic success mm -hmm. in their own terms. Mm -hmm. Uh, but beyond that, of course, we, uh, we asked the girls all to write an essay about mm -hmm. um, something that stirs them. You know, what, what is it uh, that makes them feel right. that they, they need some things mm -hmm. to be changed? Mm -hmm. And then they all have, as well, an interview. Mm -hmm. And in the interview, we're looking for girls who've shown courage. Courage. Girls who show empathy. empathy. So they're asked about a... Um, uh, an issue, I don't know, could be violence against mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. to see whether they are um, uh, what they've roused by, how they roused by that, it. how they feel about that, right. whether they feel it's something that they just have to accept or whether they feel it's something they, they, they can do uh, something right, right. about. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are trying to identify mm -hmm. women who have characteristics that we can build on by opening opening their, their minds. Makes perfect sense. And then when you uh, bring in these uh, young ladies for the education, they mostly receive scholarships and fully yes. funded. Who are the sponsors of this university? Who are the ones who are uh, you know, contributing in order to make well, this we university were, function? We were very lucky and, and to get quite a, the founder of the university, uh, though originally from, from Bangladesh, is uh, now mm. is based in America. Is that the reason why the, the university was established inside Bangladesh? No, funny enough, it wasn't. Though K Kamal Ahmed, the founder, came from Bangladesh, he mm. was educated in in America, and mm. when he when he decided he wanted to try and tackle this question mm. of girls' education and to try and build a cadre of leaders mm -hmm. to um, be role models and right. mentors in, in the Asian region. Mm -hmm. He looked at a few countries to see um, where the university might be sited. Mm -hmm. The important thing was that it was in the region and that it was in a, a country that was a, a developing an emerging country within okay. the region. Okay. Because the, the idea is that we shouldn't take the girls away from into an environment that is so different right, from right. their home environment right. that they may be more inclined not to go home. Mm -hmm. And this this was something that had a had a had a resonance with me because I can remember when I went to Kabul in uh, Afghanistan right. 
uh, asking the minister for women there. Mm -hmm. What could I do to help? Could I, could I see if I could get scholarships for some of the girls in uh, UK universities? Mm -hmm. And she said to me, that would be a, a great thing for those girls. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that when a girl goes away to somewhere like America or Europe, for education like that, right. then quite often they don't return. They don't. And really, pass possibly, can you blame right. them? Right. And Makes sense to yeah. me. And right. se secondly, she said that even if they do, what we really need in this region, in, in, for Afghanistan women, is a visible sign that girls' education matters. Mm. So a physical presence of a university in this region, right. in this area. Mm -hmm. To make the statement. To make so. the statement. Right. Because otherwise, for young girls in the villages there, um, you know, if a girl disappears to Harvard, right, right. Um, well, she might as well have gone to the moon. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if she's going somewhere in the region, right. which doesn't look so different mm -hmm. um, from, from where the, this young girl who's thinking about going to university comes from, right. then um, it's more likely to think, this is achievable. And there will be encouragement for yes. the other, yeah. other students to follow. But I, I digress from your question, which was who. So we got a lot of funding at first mm -hmm. from people like the Gates Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation, mm -hmm. um, the Open Society. Mm -hmm. um, but since then, we've had, we've had great support from Hong Kong, for example. Okay. Uh, we've, we've had uh, the IKEA Foundation recently has sponsored 200 scholarships to support girls through their four years of education mm -hmm. uh, for 200 girls okay. through through four years of education. So, uh, and we are looking here in Korea to set up a support foundation right. to fundraise and 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 support mm -hmm. young uh, women too. So we right. we are looking very much because this is a regional university, university for the for the region to um, respond, not just out of altruism, though there is a, uh, obviously a great deal mm -hmm. of altruism in mm -hmm. the region but also out of self-interest, because what we're talking about right. is educating future leaders in business, mm -hmm. future leaders in, in uh, the All NGO areas. secretary right. uh, sector, in, in politics, in your home, right. in the countries, as you said in your introduction, mm -hmm. that are around you, that right. are your trading partners, or potential trading right. partners, right. are the, the, the potential where, when you're looking for, for, for talent, mm -hmm. The potential to, to come here. So this is a this is a this is a mission. To me, it seems to make a lot of sense here because Korea is one of the countries that where we have seen, as I mentioned, a dramatic change in terms of women's status mm -hmm. and overall their participation in, in, in the economy and so on. Uh, so uh, if any country is interested in do, doing this, I think Korea should be the one that should make contribution to well, make this whole idea being realized further and then further strengthen this. And I've mentioned already that we have six students at the moment at EWA. Mm -hmm. We also actually have uh, in, in, in another, a couple of other right. universities mm -hmm. here, we have some, some of our students and they're here on scholarships. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that, that is a contribution to. Right. And we've also found that companies have been very generous in get, because one of the things we want to do for our young women mm -hmm. is to give them work experience and internships. Right. And girls have come to Korea mm -hmm. and had some uh, fantastic experiences mm -hmm. in that respect too. For, for sure, I can tell you that Korean companies, uh, some of the world's leading companies that are located in Korea are uh, getting very much more, very much more interested in female workforce, female talents, and the importance of their participation in their operations and so on. And also having global talents from coming from elsewhere as well, so it may, seems to make perfect sense here. We actually have prepared a uh, video clip of an interview of some of the uh, graduates or students of AUW here that we interviewed here in Korea, so let's take a look at it. Fantastic. We had a chance to meet with AUW graduates continuing their studies in Korea. Kamala from Nepal pointed out that the female education in her country has seen a lot of progress but women in rural areas still lack access to education. Uh, education system these days in Nepal is progressing, so women are taking higher education these days, but in Nepal we don't have a lot of universities, so people normally go to colleges, like that's three years of bachelor's degree these days, 
so when people join that women girls they join such colleges but not universities in capital and around capital it's more common for them to go to universities but in rural areas they do mostly only high school and they are more encouraged to marry early and their child marriages are very common in remote places of Nepal so girls education is not uh, that good in Nepal. Students also talked about how studying at the AUW changed their perspectives on women's role in society. Yeah, of course I have. Um, I have changed my perspective on uh, looking at the engineering department uh, and that sector uh, because uh, in our society uh, mostly only men go for the engineering uh, department. Uh, when I went to AUW, uh, I saw like many women uh, fighting in the science field to improve themselves. So I actually I was at, at first thinking of taking politics and philosophy, but then um, interacting with other uh, friends, uh, I realized that I like science more. So why don't I try more and fight hard? So it really changed my perspective because I get to know more people in AW. They also viewed Korea's education environment positively. Uh, of course, it will help me in my future career because uh, the education that I'm getting here, the exposure to research and uh, scientific community that I get here, that is really valuable in my future career because I also uh, want to be a academic, in the academic field, so maybe a professor at a university after I complete my PhD or postdoc. So I think it's a great place to start. They also plan to be actively involved in social activities after finishing their studies and going back to their countries. I'm planning to do my PhD and my postdoc and my future plan is to be a teacher, be a professor at the university and I hope to teach uh, the young generation in my country, make them more technology based, teach them about how they can use the technology. In our country actually not a lot of women do a study in science and then technology, engineering and maths. So I hope to develop this part of my country. Okay, so far uh, we have discussed women in Asia and also the Asia University for Women that Ms. Sherry Blair has helped develop in Bangladesh and also promoting all around the world. Now let's move on and uh, broaden our focus a little bit and discuss what those of us here in Korea and also elsewhere around the world can contribute to this great cause here. So for that, Ms. Blair, we have to talk about a little bit of uh, uh, general issues here uh, to get to those points. Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about Korea since you're visiting Korea. I understand the third time. Yes. Right. Uh, your observation about Korea, this is a very unique country in terms of educational environment and our performance has been ranked quite high worldwide, but also we have our own problems and issues. And maybe uh, will you be able to uh, relate these issues to uh, women's education and what you have observed here in Korea? Absolutely. And of course, um, uh, Korea has so much, uh, so much to be proud of and the, uh, the, the progress that has, has made you into a, a fully participating, developed economy with, with so much to contribute to the world, including, of course, um, as I knew when I came in 2013, you just elected a woman president. Right. Um, so 30 years after when you had your own first female prime minister. <laughs> So these are these are these are these are this is amazing progress. Your progress in relation to girls' education, in particular girls' participation in higher education, mm -hmm. where generally speaking, we will find the leaders of tomorrow, um, is um, is extraordinary. But, but there is a, a but, and that is that these young women, who you have spent so much resources on, mm -hmm. educating, giving them world quality education, they don't go on into the workforce. Right. And this is not because the girls don't want to go on to the workforce, but it appears that the workforce is not structured in such a way as to make it a welcoming place mm -hmm. uh, for them. And so though your education attainment compares, you know, stands equally with the, the US or UK right. mm -hmm. or Europe in general, 
when you look at women's participation in your workforce, uh, you do not see the mm. same levels right. of participation. Right. And indeed, for that matter, politics. <laughs> Actually, the thing is, the, the business uh, community not wanting uh, women not as much. Uh, that attitude has been changing quite fast in recent years because they face this global challenge of mm. having to uh, bring in uh, you know, global talents regardless of their gender. I think Korean business community has become much more aggressive in terms of inviting female uh, workforce. Another factor that relates to this phenomenon of uh, not having as much of female participation in the workforce has to do with culture at home. Yes. That is the demand for mothers' role yes. uh, of uh, educating children. And that high expectation for mothers, well-educated mothers, actually have stood in the way of uh, seeing greater participation. It but has, that but also it, it, is it, 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 it also stood in the way of your birth rate, actually, hasn't it? That too. Because, right. because assumptions about what educated women should do, which mm -hmm. don't match their expectations, right, right. has led to educated women not actually Right. Giving birth to children at all, exactly, and this is a, this is a, this is a phenomenon <laughs> now of a declining population. Right. So what we need to see, mm -hmm. um, because uh, Cheryl Sandberg, for example, wrote the whole book about lean in. I think mm -hmm. Korean women absolutely lean in, mm -hmm. right. but I would say to Korean society and and business and the general society that mm -hmm. unless you also lean out, lean out to meet these women right. and to help them. Mm -hmm then you're not going to achieve the diverse, imaginative right. uh, workforce right. that everybody needs mm. in the 21st century. Right. So what does that mean? That means that we need to see more part-time working. It's not a great, uh, it's not a great phenomena here in, mm. in Korea. We're not and as we, flexible about that. We need more flexible working. Right. And we also need to, to see this attitude, and I was talking uh, about this with the girls mm -hmm. at Ewa, the Korean girls, mm -hmm. about this expectation of women and motherhood. Right. Um, because I say it, this is not about motherhood actually, mm -hmm. this is about parenthood. Mm. And I was very encouraged, that there was a young re male reporter at my event, right. and I asked him, because he was asking me, I said, well what does he think about it? Mm -hmm. And I think the younger men, mm -hmm that, uh, that uh, have grown up, educated alongside the, right. these young women in Korea, mm -hmm. also understand that they too want a different attitude. Of course. They don't want to be regarded as distant figures who are only work slaves, right. if I can put it in an extravagant way, <laughs> and who work long hours and therefore are to sac sacrifice the caring side of their personality, right. their, their, their ability to... to, to, to um, share time with their children, with their wives, and they actually want to participate more fully. And if both men and women together say that whatever the, the, the traditions that led to us having a certain structure of work in the 20th century, right. those conditions have changed today. And rather than expecting the women mm -hmm. to change themselves, to fit into outdated structures, right. We actually need to see those structures changing Absolutely. to fit into the reality right. of today. So that reminds us, you know, how much more work that we need to do here in Korea as well. Even though we see these recent years very fast rise of female professionals in various areas of the government, private sector and all around the economy. Now let me tell you by the way, mm -hmm. it's all not perfect in my country either. We are facing these issues too. Right. Now, I think uh, in Europe as well, with legislation, right. we have a lot more rights for part-time workers, mm. we have maternity, mm. uh, we have a, a lot more of a culture of, of nursery education and childcare provision, but we too need to do more. So this is a, universe, this is a universal Actually, problem. I was curious more about the UK situation a little bit. Maybe we are side-tracking uh, a little bit here, but uh, last year's UNDP Human Development Report uh, ranked Korea as number 14 in the world mm -hmm. in terms of this issue. And the UK was like around with us, around that rank mm -hmm. there. Uh, with, in comparison with other European countries, why is it that UK has, seems to have more issue here, very briefly? Well, I think it's, it's partly that we actually also have a long hours culture. Mm. Um, okay. And though we have the regu um, legislation about flexible working, mm -hmm. uh, and we've had equal pay legislation, all my... I, all my life as a lawyer, it's one of the areas right. that I, 
I worked in, but we still have a, a wage gap of 17%. Between, 17%? Yeah, okay. between men and women. Mm -hmm. Um, what are we the also smallest have gaps in elsewhere around, uh, like in no, Europe? No, well, like to, to be absolutely honest, mm -hmm. um, that's about. There seems to be a problem in beyond, other European. No, countries. beyond yes, going getting below fifteen percent actually. I see. Um, so the, the, there are structural issues here that we're we're still we're still struggling struggling to find the the answers to. But what what I think about Korea, mm -hmm. I think what we saw in Korea emerging. What is it now? Sixty years ago, from mm -hmm. from you know conflict and strife, how quickly Korea, when it saw what was working elsewhere, how quickly Korea took that right. and made it work even better here, mm -hmm. actually. Right. And I believe that we will see this also happening in relation to these issues about right. redesigning work life, right, right. so that both men and women can 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 fulfill themselves as parents as well as as committed individuals in the workplace. Right. Indeed, Koreans have this reputation of being able to fix things very quickly and bring in quick changes and so on. I'm and hoping you're going to be able to teach us some things. <laughs> I <laughs> really do. Let's, let's hope so. <laughs> uh, relating to that point of our, like our common ground here, as I mentioned, uh, about 30 years ago, the UK had its first female prime minister. Mm -hmm. Uh, a leader of the free world at that time, which was uh, quite a uh, dramatic news at that time. After about 30 years or l uh, less than that, Korea also came to have our own national leader, who was a female as well, uh, which is a unique case in Northeast Asia still. Uh, what do you see in that fact of this country having female leader for the nation, considering your experience 30 years ago? Well, let, let me say, it's, it's partly what I was saying before in relation to education. Female role models are important. Okay. And so your president is now a female role model. Around the world? Around the world, mm -hmm. and particularly, of course, mm -hmm. as you say, from, for, for countries in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. Women in Asia. Women. Inspiration in, for them. An inspiration for them, of course. But, you know, it's not enough to have a role model. You also have to uh, build the bridges and, 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 and make the efforts to ensure that other women can also join you in, in that area. Of course. And so that's, uh, you, you, know, you know, one woman, one woman can show what is possible, mm -hmm. but one woman alone mm -hmm. um, is, not, is not going to uh, be able to transform things. Right, right. It, it's a collective effort. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it's encouraging for us to see for example, number of lawmakers at the National Assembly, uh, the portion was miserable a few years ago, female lawmakers. Now it's rising fast. So as you, as you mentioned, it just reflects overall social change here. Maybe some people are setting examples and other people are following. So uh, we can be hopeful for I that. Think, I think this is, a, this is an interesting issue because the World Economic Forum does its Global Gender Gap. Right. Report, mm -hmm. and it shows across the world in mm -hmm. general, and we're not talking necessarily about the quality, mm -hmm. but across the world in general, we've seen pleasing progress in equality of treatment mm -hmm. in, for women in relation to education opportunities and health opportunities. So now the targets, and I'm not, there are some places where it's much worse, but generally speaking, you've got about a ninety percent. Right. Um, but when you look, they they measure four things: education health. Mm -hmm. The other two they measure is economic opportunities, economic advancement and uh, political right, participation. Right. Political participation. Right. And when you look around the world there, you will find that the difference between men and women is still 60% 60, 60 women, to, so mm -hmm. six women to every 10 men. Oh, okay. And if you look at political participation, right, it's right. about 2.4 women to every 10 men. A long way to go. So if you ask, where is the real power in this world? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the economy and it's in politics. Right. And there, mm -hmm. women still have a, have, a, have a long way to go. Right. But at the same time, we are being reminded by the news that in the business world, some of the world's leading corporations, regardless of their nationalities, right, one of the biggest names, biggest brands around the world, uh, are now being led by women. Absolutely. So that's Dear a friend huge of mine, change. Indra Nui is not only a woman, but she's an Asian woman. Right. And she runs PepsiCo. Right. 
I was thinking about that yes, case. Well. A absolutely. So mm. she is a role model. Mm. Computer companies, automakers. Absolutely. As well. right, General right. Motors now has a has a woman head. Right. But um, you've also got to look at the pipeline of women. Mm. I'm, uh, and you've got to look uh, at not just women on boards, mm -hmm. not just women CEOs, mm -hmm. but also what's happening in management, management senior general. management. Right, right the pipeline that becomes the board, the executive members of the board. We are right. seeing a, 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 a campaign across the world now to get more women as board members. Mm -hmm. I myself am on the Renault board. Right. Right. But, um, you know, women on boards is, 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 is the top, the tip of the iceberg. But what we have to do mm -hmm. is make sure that women are coming up through the executive track right. Right. as right. well. So there's a, there's, a, there's a lot to do, but the good thing is that one of the reasons we're making an effort for this is we now have the academic research that shows mm -hmm. that not that women are better than men, um, but that actually the different experiences the divi the, the, and diver it means that diversity is the mm -hmm. key. The best companies are those that don't just have everybody who thinks the same and does the same and right. has the same experiences. Mm -hmm. And that obviously, uh, affects women and men, but it affects uh, disability issues, it affects um, age issues. Right. Diversity mm -hmm. is the key. It's about mm -hmm. uh, looking at problems in different ways. Right. And diversity actually means also adaptability for mm -hmm. businesses as well. So Absolutely. that's why uh, we hope in Korea particularly, uh, we hope to see more women rising to their managerial positions in coming one years. Of, one of my colleagues on uh, in the AUW is Kathy Matsui, mm -hmm. who is the, was the first woman director in Goldman Sachs Japan, oh, I and see. she coined the phrase "womanomics." Womanomics, right? And uh, and she and others have produced research which actually shows mm -hmm. that diverse boards get better returns on their investment for their investors, right, right. tend to uh, you know do better products, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, tend to have more contented mm -hmm. workforces. So what we're seeing is a real economic case when the real issue is should be not um, right. why having women or why you right. don't have it's women at every level. It's not just an equal opportunity no. issue. It's but actually greater profitability. Absolutely, and everybody better business. Be everybody, right. everybody benefits. Right, and for that, those kind of issues, Korea is very much attuned, and and Korea has a great uh, commitment in terms of promoting. Uh, greater role for women, not only in this country but around the world, and that's why we are uh, talking about this issue, particularly in this program as well. And I understand you have mentioned already, but I understand September second you have visited Ihua Women's University and had this event. And we just have a video clip uh, about this uh, event that you oh, had. Fantastic. So let's take a look at it, and then we'll uh, wrap up our discussion here. Let's take a look. On September 2nd, Iwa Women's University and the Asian University for Women held a roundtable discussion on female education and leadership. Sherry Blair joined the discussion as one of the main speakers. Partnership between Korea and Bangladesh. Um, you might think there's not a lot that Korea and Bangladesh have in common. And yet, if you went back to 1965, just, you know, many of you were not born then, I, I certainly was, um, it's just a generation or so ago. Do you know that the per capita GDP in Bangladesh and Korea, South Korea, were the same? Now, Korea is 20 times larger in its GDP. Why is that? One of the reasons is definitely education. Investment by the government and by individuals in education. So regional collaboration, international collaboration is important. But this even more, the 21st century is going to be the era of women. We already hear, don't we, about uh, studies that show actually the biggest change, the biggest drivers of development in the world is not the coming into prominence of China or India. 
it's actually the participation of two billion women into the into the world economy. We are part of a movement which gives us comfort when sometimes we have to stick our heads above the parapet and, and stand out for what we see is injustice in the world. We heard from students at the discussion about the role of Korea in promoting female education in Asia and the Middle East. Um, the education is at the core of female leadership that we have discussed in the roundtable discussion. And actually, we can see in the Middle East, uh, such as several Arab world, that there are um, successful female politician participation rates and cases. Nevertheless, it's still, um, this current situation is still very weak and needs a lot of improvement and a lot of attention. And I think the effort needs to be made by the central leaders, such as the cent at the center, at the core of politicians, of politics, civil society, and the cultural leaders, and their changes in their understanding about women's education can actually make a difference, and that is the effort that we need. Korea has an important role to play in international development and cooperation. It is the only nation to have developed rapidly from an aid recipient to an aid donor. Also, it is thought that women in Confucian cultures have a lower social status, enjoying fewer rights and gender equality. Korea's improvements in women's rights as a Confucian culture makes it a role model for other countries. Lawyer Kim Young-jun, chairman of the AUW Support Foundation, stressed the role of private companies in improving female education. Um, as for the government's role, we all know that Korea uh, is what it is today, in large part due to its uh, heavy emphasis on investment in education. And also another undeniable fact is that coupled with our own efforts in education, um, many advanced countries helped us along um, in significant ways. Now that Korea is a um, long-standing member of OECD um, and also one of the largest trading countries in the world, um, I, it, which means it benefits tremendously from global uh, engagement. I think it is time for the government to pay particular attention to our neighbors, uh, who could learn from our experience as well as needing our resources. Um, I realize the government is doing a lot, uh, for example, through many volunteers under the umbrella of COICA, um, or training of mid-career civil servants uh, under the KDI programs. Uh, as for AUW, uh, for example, Korea Export Import Bank uh, is hosting three AUW students um, as summer interns and we're very grateful for that. Um, that is as a result of um, uh, the uh, memorandum of understanding the AUW Support Foundation entered into with Korea Exim Bank in 2013 when Zestulaire visited uh, Korea in January 2013. Uh, regarding the corporate sector, again, Korea's large conglomerates have truly global operations and therefore benefit from the global markets and citizenry. Um, Korean companies need to realize, however, doing good for others ultimately benefit them as global companies as well. But instead of asking what's in it uh, for our own company's profits, the company should ask whether it's the right thing to do and whether we have the means to help. Uh, for example, the Swedish global furniture giant IKEA through its foundation, IKEA Foundation, is sponsoring multi-year scholarship for 200 of AUW students. And we've been uh, extremely um, uh, grateful uh, for their uh, attention and assistance in this regard. And nearby Japan, um, the massively popular clothing company Uniqlo, which is also very popular in Korea, uh, is funding also multi-year uh, scholarships for AUW students. I believe there are Korean companies um, who are just as much global, if not more so, than these international companies with resources and infrastructure to help women's education. I think the help could take the form of scholarships, uh, internships, mentorships, as well as contributions in kind. And um, I'm fond of saying Samsung, for example, I'm speculating, uh, discards more computers every day than AUW could use in five years. So um, it, perhaps it could help with IP infrastructure and um, uh, uh, equipment. Uh, finally, as for the general citizenry, I'm encouraged by many of Korean um, youths going abroad to serve and then learn from uh, others in remote parts of the world. 
um, through COICA and otherwise. Um, they could also serve as teaching fellows at AEW, for example, uh, become exchange students and learn from each other. Already thanks to Iha Women's University, um, uh, we have several AUW graduates uh, who are studying for masters at Iha under Iha's Global Partnership Program uh, scholarship. And again, we are very grateful to Iha for uh, close cooperation and assistance in this regard. These students and local Korean students have so much to gain and learn from each other um, by interaction and co-learning. Uh, for closing of our program here, of course we have so much more to we want to talk about, but our time is limited. Uh, two things, your future plan and also uh, how uh, some, of, some parts of your plan relates to the future of AUW, Asian University for Women. Well, the AUW, as I said before, is, is at the moment we have about 500 students at the school. Mm -hmm. We would like to see that expand to 1,200 students. Um, because that would enable us to offer more courses, to mm -hmm. get the benefits of economies of scale. For that, probably we, uh, the school needs more support from Korea as we well. Do. We do. Right. We need more money. In addition to that, um, the, I said already that we have this, independence, this independent charter from the Bangladesh government, but they did give us 100 acres of land. Mm -hmm. uh, and we even have a beautiful design for a campus. But we don't have the money to build the campus. Now, of course, the thing that makes AUW so special, even in the uh, former office buildings that we now use, um, is the atmosphere of, uh, and, and the, the thought that goes on and, and the, the contribution that all the girls and the international uh, faculty mm -hmm. make to that. Right. But, um, you know, our other aim of honoring what these girls do and making a visible sign mm -hmm. of why girls' education is important. Right. And indeed, our aim of attracting good faculty members mm -hmm. um, would be aided if we could actually develop this building. That's why we, we are, we're launching a, a big campaign now mm -hmm. that we, we have 350 young women whose stories, like the ones I've told you, we can illustrate this university really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. We want to raise $100 million to build the campus, mm -hmm. to expand to 1,000 200 students and to really um, build up our endowment so that we can support scholarships so that girls who have talent from all over right. the region can mm -hmm. come to AUW and become those symbols of courage, right. those beacons of hope, mm -hmm. those uh, role models right. that we see in your own president mm -hmm. as, a, as a woman and as we see in these young girls as they progress in their journey through life. Right, right. Ms. Sherry Blair, all of our viewers, I'm sure, have gotten a lot of inspiration from your wonderful work and all the difference that you're making off the Down Downing Street after all these years, <laughs> continuing to do in different parts around the world, particularly with this issue of AUW as well. I'm sure they're, they're very much impressed. And I'm sure through this program, we will get to uh, perhaps get more support from Korea as well. So thank you very much. I'm for sure of it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. <laughs> okay, that does it for us for our program today uh, for Upfront. Many thanks, of course, to our wonderful guest here, but also very special thanks to our viewers who have joined from all around the world. Thank you very much. And until next time, this has been Upfront and your host, Kim Byung-ju. Goodbye.